Many people remember the vivid scenes of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami that rocked Japan. But how many people realize that that same type of geologic feature, a subduction zone, sits just off the coast of Washington, Oregon? My name is Rich Hildreth, and I want to talk to you today about how the Pacific Northwest is susceptible to a 9.0 or greater megathrust subduction zone type earthquake. Now, when tectonic plates collide, one plate gets pushed up, and the other, of course, gets pushed down underneath. As one plate rises up and over the other, sometimes these plates lock. And when it does, the pressure builds up until something ruptures. This rupture occurs, uh, results in an earthquake. Well, history has shown that this type of rupture occurs, on average, about every 300 to 500 years along the Cascadia subduction zone. That zone runs from Vancouver Island to the northern coast of California. The last quake, uh, last subduction zone quake, occurred there just over 313 years ago. Now, at approximately 10 p.m., the night of January 26, 1700, a megathrust earthquake occurred off the coast of Washington at what is now known as the, Ca the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, this quake uh, was estimated between 8.7 and 9.2. It caused a rupture of the seafloor about 620 miles, uh, 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 long 620 miles of uh, uh, seafloor and caused an average slip of over 60 feet. Uh, one stretch of the Washington State coastline suddenly dropped 6 to 10 feet. Not only create a new shoreline, but drop an entire forest into uh, in below sea level and allowing salt water then to inundate root systems. This created what is now known as ghost forest. You can see these standing trees here. This is a healthy forest that suddenly died uh, as a result of the, of the last earthquake. Now you may wonder, how can we tell uh, when this earthquake had happened? There wasn't that many people around 1700. Well, local details are recorded in tree rings, layers of strata, and in local folklore. On this picture here, you can actually see here's the, here's the, the current grass, and you can see the various different layers. Well, this layer right here, about one foot, uh, is estimated, that's, that's what they estimate uh, was brought in by the tsunami of the 1700 earthquake. But that's probably not the best uh, best description. One of the best descriptions comes from Japan in what is now known as orphan tsunami. Uh, the following morning after this earthquake, a six foot uh, tsunami was, was documented traveling in Tokyo Bay. Well, they were, scientists were able to figure out a six foot tsunami happening in, happening in Tokyo Bay and they know not happen. It was not from a quake that occurred locally. They were able to track that all the way across the Pacific Ocean and were able to pretty much pin down when and where that earthquake happened. Well, in 1700, that occurred at geologic time when very few people lived in the Northwest. What if this quake were to happen today? Well, people in the Northwest, you know, we've felt big quakes. We've had the, the 2001 Nisqually earthquake uh, it was a 6.8 located about 40 miles deep, and that lasted for about 42 seconds. Uh, a lot of people in Seattle, they always talk about the West Seattle earthquake. Uh, it, it, it was about a 6.5, it was a shallow quake, uh, but caused over $12.5 million, not adjusted for, uh, not adjusted for today's, uh, today's cost. This is a paper from the Seattle, uh, Seattle Coast Intelligence. This has a lot of pictures from that quake. But megathrust earthquake is much different. Number one, uh, the Nisqually quake lasted 42 seconds. A megathrust quake may last well over five minutes. How much more damage would that additional shaking cause? The, probably the biggest thing, though, is a 9.5 earthquake, which is what they estimate could it, it could be up to. It's 500 times larger than the 2000, uh, 2001 Nisqually quake. That's an energy release of over 11,000 times. How much more damage would that cause? Now, when a megathrust earthquake happens, uh, it has the potential of, the, of being the largest natural disaster to ever occur in the United States. Far bigger than Hurricane Sandy or Hurricane Katrina. Some of the reasons it would happen with little or no warning. Uh, from the time the quake happens until the landfall of the tsunami, it may be less than 20 minutes. Uh, additionally, the tsunami would be in the range of, you know, up to around 30 feet, and you'd have successive waves that would, would keep impacting the coastline for 10 to 12 hours. More than 90% of the trans transportation routes uh, in and out 
throughout the Northwest would be damaged at least to some degree and full, full restoration of those routes may take more than a year. The economic impact of that would be felt not only in Washington State, but would be felt around the country. Washington State and Oregon are very big ports for shipping uh, international trade, especially out of Asia. Now the purpose of this video is not to scare you. The purpose is to inform you of what is possible so you can take appropriate action to prepare. It's my hope that this video inspires you to at least think about what you may need to do if this quake were to occur tomorrow. What supplies might you need? What training? How an event of this size impact your life and the lives of those you care about? I hope this video inspires you to get involved in your local emergency management community. See what trains available, see what you can do to make your community more disaster, disaster resistant. Now for more, for more information, and you can download all the information I just discussed, uh, please go to www.crew.org, that's Cascade Regional Earthquake Work Group, or contact your local emergency management agency. Thank you.